With me now is Sad Saranwala, who's the Chief Impact Officer at InFarm. Thank you very much for your time. Thank Firstly, you. give me a sense of what you are wanting to see at COP27. Okay. So InFarm is a network of cloud-connected vertical farms. So we are really a subset of controlled environment agriculture operating in Western Europe, North America and Japan. So what we are really bringing to the table is a new form of production in terms of resilience, because we're looking at what is a climate resilient way of growing food for the future. And that's what vertical farming provides. And then the second is in terms of the supply chains, because we grow in urban areas, we completely crash the supply chain from the point of growing to the point of distribution and consumption. These are the two aspects of resilience that we are looking to bring to farm. When you talk about vertical farming, effectively this is in urban areas. What success have you had to this point in the 10 countries in which you operate? So in the 10 countries that we operate, we've got more than a thousand uh, different points of sale. We work with 30 of the world's largest retailers. So the distribution chain is pretty much like any food system. So we supply to the retailer who then sells to their consumers. And, and therefore we've been selling, obviously we're selling tens of millions of plants every year. When it comes to the actual crops that are, you are, are deploying into the vertical farming, what are we looking at? Okay, so we started out with herbs and leafy greens, which is probably standard for hydroponics and vertical farming. And that trajectory has now grown to include mushrooms, uh, tomatoes, strawberries, and we are now looking at the next generation, which is staple crops. So there, so there is, like we like to term it as moving from the side of the plate to the center of the plate. How quickly do you think that this can gather momentum to basically impact food systems globally that are so very constrained at the moment? So in terms of the actual vegetable, the fruit and vegetable basket, that is very much on the horizon. So the market is estimated to be $30 billion by 2030. So we are talking about within this decade that's going to have an impact in terms of supplying cities and making cities more self-resilient. In terms of the staple crops and in terms of some of those products like wheat, like rice, like cereals, we're probably looking at a, at a uh, slightly longer time frame, maybe in the next decade. So the cost effectiveness of vertical farming is all about cost and obviously return on investment. Is it something that we can say is affordable um, from a production perspective? Well, the investment community has spoken with their, with their wallets, if you will, uh, and they have been funding the growth of vertical farming because they've been putting it into the context of climate resilience and food shops. So they've been food security at a broader level. So in terms of the unit economics, that has already been proven by multiple players across the North American markets and in the European set. And then just coming back to the, the food systems outlook of which you are a contingent here yes. at COP27, what do you think the next two weeks will bring effectively and what are you looking to get out of it? So this is really for us and the reason that we are one of the co-hosts is that we're looking at partnerships we're looking at the overall food systems, and most importantly, we're looking at solutions of which we are one. There are multiple solutions out there, whether at a technology level or a policy level, and we are really looking to chisel down into solutions, 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 solutions. That's what we want to do. Yeah, we like that. Solutions, solutions. I think we'll make that the mantra for COP27. Sad Saranwara, the Chief Impact Officer at InFarm. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Nielsen Network. Thank you.